Hey sisterhood, welcome back to another episode of Sisters. On this episode, we'll be dealing with unsolicited advice. <laughs> Stay tuned. And we are back. Before we get into today's topic, let's pay some bills. We wanna give a shout out to Glam D Loungewear. For all of your loungewear needs, visit www.glamdloungewear.com. Also, Winner's Palace. It's an amazing venue space located in Brooklyn, New York, owned by overseas-based Guyanese, Mr. Keevan Beaton. Definitely check them out and book them for all of your uh, venue needs. Also, we want to give a shout out to the Shimishana brand. Don't forget to visit them at www.shimishana.com and wonder scrub like silk for all of your skincare needs has anyone ever came up to you and just provided unsolicited unsolicited opinions or advice about how you may look or about your life and have you ever thought to yourself did i even ask you or have you ever thought to yourself well look at you you should be one to talk yeah we've all been there we'll be talking about those people who Feel the need to give their opinion about your appearance, your weight gain, or just anything about you as if you've asked them the question. Hi, sisters. How are you? Hi, Hi Shimi. Hi, Hi, Shimi. So, Svetlana and Colleen, have, were you ever faced with that one person who felt the need to approach you to tell you about how you look, how you should live your life, or anything concerning you that simply just did not concern them? And if so, how did you handle it? And well, Svetlana, you could tell me how you would have handled it. And Colleen, you could tell me how did that make you feel? And how did you want to respond? Or how did you respond to that? So, you know, like, I feel like all my life, <laughs> my adult life, I've had to put up with people who saw the need to say, hey, girl, look how you got fat. <laughs> You're really put on a lot of size. Or like you're pregnant, you're gone again. You know, I feel like I, like I had to really breathe in, you know, take a deep breath and conquer three before saying something ill. So I try not to, you know, respond negatively, but I feel like people saw me before when I started my uh, life on television in 2009 as this skinny girl and it's as if they didn't expect that I would grow older mm. and probably put on a few pounds. So when they see, and these are complete strangers or people who just know of me and not know me personally. Mm. And so they would say, oh, look how you get fat. And somehow they think that is a compliment and they fail to recognize like, you know, people struggle with various things. Uh, for me, if I'm depressed, you know, I eat a lot. Mm. And of course, there are period or stages in my life. I said, hey, I want to lose weight, but it doesn't happen automatically. And I don't feel like anybody should put a timer on me to say, hey, you mm. must lose weight yeah. at such and such a time or don't get no more fat, don't mm. get fat, don't get more <laughs> fat. And, you know, I just try, you know, I would smile it off because I try to be a nice person, but really dumb inside, I try to ask myself, why are you asking me or telling me this? Like, how is it your business? Mm. Um, well, I've, I've had many cases of persons coming up to me and they'd be like, you ain't gaining no weight. <laughs> what going on with you? You ain't gonna put on a little fat, Colleen. Same way I saw you last year or probably a couple of years back, it's the same way you're looking right now. And you know, um, I, I don't know if I struggle with weight or I don't know if just, just my body makeup or my body, I don't know, but um, my sisters can tell you, I eat and I eat a lot. I'm always hungry. Um, when I visit, I always need something to eat. I, I, and, and, I, and I'm specific with what I need to eat and so forth. So, um, you know, persons would always be like, um, when you're gaining weight and, you know, I'm, I'm now starting to put on a few pounds and so on, 
So I do hope, you know, I don't throw it off by these persons walking up to me and saying such. But, and so, but when you gain weight, say you gain an extra 20 pounds, mm, the very again, people, yeah. just say, look how, how you get, get so fat. fat. You get square, man. Don't right? put on no more weight. Exactly. And I have, e even my, even my, my students, they would say to me, miss, but watch how your belly getting big, miss, you're pregnant. And like every day, every day. And they're like, but miss, like since you start working here, like you pregnant man, because you know, I have a high tummy. And you know, um, I think, I think as Lana would have indicated, it has to do with the relationship that you have with, with, with whoever it is, is asking. Because I feel as though if someone walked up to me and probably just by seeing me mm -hmm. and they, they don't have any affiliation with me or we're just an acquaintance and we're not, we're, we don't have this bond or this connection. Like I would see Lana and I would say certain things to yeah. her. and Because we're close. Right, because we have a bond. But I feel like um, the unsolicited opinion comes when you don't know me we don't have any sort of connection and you just feel that you That's need the to. That's the first thing. Right. It's not like even, okay, hi, how you doing? Right. How is UG? Mm -hmm. How is CPC? You know, anything else about your well-being. It's, it's like, this is the first thing you want to say to me. You get fat or it's you're true. so fine. You don't even put on two pounds. Like, that is the issue. I mean, you shouldn't even say it. You should probably keep some things to yourself. Yeah, it's true. So I would, I, I think, I think when it comes from my circle, because we're connected, I don't feel any way because I would go up to them and I would ask them the same question at our first approach. But if it comes from a person who is not in my circle, we're just an acquaintance, um, you're just an, a, co a colleague, or you just happen to see me and I happen to say hi one day, um, that does not give you the right to just walk up to me and say, oh, you know, this is what's going on. Um, you need to this or you need to that. You know, I don't see how your thoughts should um, evoke any sort of feelings in me or, or, or anything because I, I don't think you have the validation to speak or, or suggest what I should do and how I should do it and, and how I should look and so forth. Um, so if it comes from, you know, just any any person whom, whom I don't have that connection with, I think I would tell you to your face, um, you know, and how does that affect you? So that, that that's that's my position on unsolicited opinion. Shimmy, well, let's hear, let, let's hear Shimmy. <laughs> what would you say, Shimmy? <laughs> and it doesn't necessarily have to do with weight, losing or gaining, but, you know, about your life in general. Yeah. Correct. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to do with weight, but I feel like in our culture, that is the first thing people tend to comment on. And I say our culture because... I remember last year I went home for my grandfather's funeral and at the funeral, okay, I am here by his casket boohooing like, oh my God. And I kid you not, okay, people came up to me in that moment and they're like, oh my God, girl, look at you. Look how you get fat. Oh God, look the bum bum, look the, the butt. And I'm just like, in the moment, I was so consumed with the emotions. I didn't really, like my brain didn't process it. I heard it, but my brain didn't process it. And I got that comment from quite a few people, right? Because it's no secret, I gained weight, so what? I'm comfortable with it. But I would like to say to those people who feel the need to go up to others and comment on their appearance or whatever they feel they need to comment on as if somebody asks them, you need to exercise emotional intelligence and teach your children to do the same. Not everything you think needs to escape your lips. And in the moment when people were telling me that about, oh, girl, I'm so happy to see you. Look how you gain weight. First of all, mm, it's none of your concern. I'm not sitting on your face. Why do you care? Also, my husband is a six foot four, 250 pounds, and he can bench press 
this 190 quite well. So I don't need you to have any worry about my size. And I say that with love in the name of Jesus. So yeah, that's my response to, to people who feel the need to comment on anything re regarding me if I didn't ask you. And I think throughout my life, people have learned to not go up to Shimmy and tell her nonsense. Like if I don't, don't do it. Let us live in peace and love and harmony and move on swiftly and professionally, okay? Shinati, what about you? Well, first of all, I want to say thank God for maturity. Thank oh, God yeah. for little weight. <laughs> Trust all me. Of them. All of them. When I look back at some of the pictures of when I was younger and way thinner, I'm like, oh my God. Something was definite. I mean, slim was the slim was the sexy back then. And I felt I was the hottest thing before sliced bread. When I look at these pictures, my collarbone showing, me, me jawbone look hard. <laughs> this is not cutting it. <laughs> I'm not saying anything is wrong with being thin, right? But for me, Thick looks good on me and I wear it proudly but for the people that feel like um, them is the, the fat police or the size police I think you should take another job because the money working out for you I feel like um, especially in Linden I feel like it's a form of greeting in Linden mm -hmm. oh god girl you got so fat like that's how they know to greet people like, whatever happening to how you doing, I ain't seen in a long time, you know, them kind of things. Like, them things don't walk the move. So And they can't even be when, on the top. <laughs> you know, right? That is exactly it. That is one thing. The second thing is, it takes a lot to get fat. Like, you know, you can't eat a little bit and get fat. So if I get in fat, it means that I'm eating well. That's true. Thirdly, I choose to be fat. Like, mm -hmm. my weight has fluctuated from time to time. And like Lana said, some people are struggling with certain things. On the, on the more positive, on the more, like, serious side, you have people who are struggling with PCOS. And for those who know about PCOS, polycystic ovarian um, syndrome, you like your weight is one of the biggest um, problems with people suffering with this thing and there is no cure for it. So one time you'll be fat, there is nothing you could do about it. Your hormones are all over the place. And next time you might manage to drop off a little two pounds, three pounds, whatever. But like you need to know what somebody's going through before you decide to comment. It's fine that you're observing me and that in, that important that you're taking time to notice whether I gain weight or lose weight. But the reality of the matter is, your opinion does not matter to me. Since when being fat is a problem? Mm -hmm. My family, my family's skin type, my family's body type is people with big, like big bones, like they are fat. I know what I will look like a couple of years down the line because I see what my mom looks like. I'm just trying to delay the process a little. And that happens too because society make you feel like if you're fat, you're sick. <laughs> no. I realize when I when I went on vacation, I'm like, you know, I always said I have big boobs and like I wanna I wanna do like a breast reduction because I feel like I felt I get like a hard time looking for clothes and so on. And the amount of compliments I get about my boobs when I'm on vacation, I'm like, okay, I see it sexy now. So what might be what might be acceptable to you might not be acceptable to somebody else. So if you feel like my size, you should comment on it. Look at yourself first. Because I'm <laughs> sure there's something else that you might be struggling with. And when you feel the need to comment on somebody else, else's size as the first thing it means that you don't know to carry on a conversation 
So you just have to look for things to make small talks about. That means you don't know me enough for us to conquer. So get away from telling people how fat they are or, oh God, yo, when you gonna get married? Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Or make an when extra you baby. Get a baby. Yeah. When you gonna make your child? We waiting for like, Mm -hmm. what if i choose not to get children what if i am just waiting until i am ready mm -hmm. why should all of this matter to you so be mindful of what you say to people because it can either break them or make them and fat shaming is a serious thing people have suffered with serious self-esteem problems because of somebody else's opinion of their size and it is always about um being fat it's never about like if somebody said oh you're so fine you know some people might but majority of the people suffer with like self-esteem problems after being commented after people commenting steadily on their size and so on so i am comfortable in my skin i felt the need to lose a little a few pounds here and there it wasn't because i wasn't confident enough but it's because i wanted to got a new creed i wanted to feel a little different that's true and thirdly most importantly because of health reasons i wanted to lose a few pounds so i mean fetching around all of these breasts enough is done a lot of weight much less with size with it so be mindful of what you say to people and a lot of people tend to project how they really feel about themselves they project yeah. it others and i, I feel oh, like true. you need to do some self introspection before you go out there and open your mouth and mm -hmm. project your insecurities onto others whether it be about weight the way they look the way they live their life having kids getting married like keep it to yourself unless they ask you just keep it to yourself and if it bothers you pray about it to whomever you pray to just pray about it okay if i could interject you know, um, growing up, I've always had an issue being allergic to mosquitoes, mm -hmm. right? And so in Linden, you know, Linden has a lot of mosquitoes, at least where I was living. And so I grew up with marks on my skin. And there were people who thought it fitting to tell me, oh, look how you're sorry, boy, you know, all the names. And it's a form of bullying, mm. you know. And at one point, it probably affected how... I saw myself. Yeah, it does. Because one, your skin marky, mm -hmm. and two, you're growing a bit chubby. And so then for them, you, that's where you don't want to wear so certain clothes and go to I public. reached a point in my life where I'm, I say, you know, I'm in control of me. Mm -hmm. I decide what I want for me. And so, as, as a form of rebellion, I would say, you know, rebelling against who the, the norms who of society see it fit mm -hmm. to set standards for yeah. me. I would wear my short dress my short dresses and my skirts and so on. And like, who are you to tell me not to wear it? Mm -hmm. Because I have a few marks on my skin. Like, how is it, how is it affecting you as a person? You understand? I remember going to work and I always had this issue because I'm thick. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time I wasn't fat. I was thick. And they're saying, oh, you shouldn't wear certain things because you're thick. And there is a skinny girl wearing a shorter or even shorter skirt. But, oh, it doesn't look like that. Like, if, we, if she can't wear, if I can't wear short stuff, I mean, sometimes it was a bit extreme. But if, It's always <laughs> extreme. So you know, but that's how I, you know, how, that's how I boost myself. Because I want to go against what society tells me mm -hmm. not to do. So that's, so sometimes, you know, I said, listen, it makes sense you talk. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how much you tell me I'm fat and I shouldn't wear certain clothes and I shouldn't wear short stuff it, because I, at this point it has no effect on me. And sooner you realize that the better for you because you talking to I'm talking to people in general, oh, okay, okay. you know, who always, so like, <laughs> because throughout my life, I feel like people always saw the need to tell me, Oh, don't wear this. Um, your skin mark. And some people would be surprised to see me in my two piece. Yes. Next summer, you'll see me my two piece again. Look out for the photos because I am proud of who I am. With two children, I look damn good. I, I but that's a very important point, Swetlana. Like society has set standards for us, and people 
the people, all they're trying to do is meet that standard. Why should we follow what they see as accepted as or unacceptable? Like I could be whoever I want to be. I could wear whatever I want to wear. Once I feel confident and once I'm not bringing any form of disrespect or, or shame on my kids or family or whoever, I do whatever I want. Get with the program. That was a great point, um, Svetlana. And you touched on, it is a form of bullying. And I, I mean, that's a different topic within itself, but bullying lies within that. Like I know for me growing up, I was teased about having a big head. Mm. And the thing <laughs> is, and Shigali, do you remember that time when you first met me? You were like, <laughs> why is your face so round? Because I have a round face and a big head. Huh? And she was like, why is your face so round? Yes, ma'am. You mean? Yes, ma'am. I'm taking this opportunity in public to apologize <laughs> for that response. I was Thank young <laughs> and I was naive. And I didn't, what I know now, I didn't know then. So if I meet you now for the first time, I'll say, oh, you're very sexy because you are very sexy. Like everybody wants to have what Shimi has. Shimi has. Her body is curved in a curly. Don't be looking like that. So Shimi, back then I saw your head, but I'm no longer seeing it. So I'm apologizing <laughs> for that remark that I gave you back then. 20 something years down the line, I realized I was wrong and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, that was, I, I forgive you, sis. I forgive you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I love you so much. <laughs> and, and the person that would tease me, hi, Jolyn. Love you. He would tease me. Oh, I, sp my I spoke with Jolyn last night, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> and if you know Jolyn, he has one of the biggest bigger heads in 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 linden i would say yeah. uh by the way we do love ah. Jolyn. yeah and he would tease me he used to call me head no <laughs> in school <laughs> yeah and head of state and i'm just like that's something my big head is something i cannot change and would not change even if i had the opportunity to it's part of who i am and that's why i'm always 10 steps ahead of people because of this big head so yeah <laughs> Just leave people and leave, live and let live, folks. That is the message. Yeah. Do not give unsolicited advice or opinion if no one asks you. Mind your business. Keep your thoughts to yourself. Exercise emotional intelligence. Teach your children to do the same. Not everything you think you have to say. And that is the message uh, for today. <laughs> we love you for watching. Don't forget to check us out on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and now on Apple Podcasts. We'll see you next week. Bye.